Hey guys, I want to talk about my new newest AR-15 build. I want to go over the parts that I have on it and why I chose them. So let's start off with the front. So that is a DS Arms full birdcage flash hider. Um, I bought it with the barrel that you see here. It's a heavy barrel from DS Arms. It's a 416R stainless barrel and it is very hefty. It's a very, very thick barrel. Um, so I kind of I kind of built this gun to be more of an SPR kind of build. Um, it, it has a 16 and a quarter inch barrel, so it's not really SPR-ish like some of the 18 inch barrels, but it is a heavier, six, heavy, heavier 16 inch um, barrel. And you know, 16 inches, that's plenty of barrel to get the maximum velocity you pretty much can. Um, on a decently short AR, so that's why I chose it. Um, I decided to run a Surefire Scout light on it. It's the M612U, and I have a pressure pad on it as well. That's, this is just momentary, and this is constant. So it's very expensive, but I think it's really worth it. Um, handguard. So I have the Fortis Rev 2 M-Lock handguard. It's very nice. Um, it's very light and I think it really looks nice with this gun. So I'm running a vertical grip on it. You know I decided, well I was contemplating on getting a bipod on it but honestly I don't know I think I'm gonna sk stick with that uh, vertical grip for now and see how that works. Um, you know, laying prone and stuff like that. If it doesn't work out that well, I'm gonna get a bipod for it. So, <clears throat> so upper receiver. I bought this upper receiver from Aero Precision. Um, it has a U.S. flag emblem on the back here, but it's covered up by that rear sight, so you can't really see it. Um, Aero Precision. I think they actually uh, lap their receivers. Um, because when I put the barrel on here and brought it to the range for the first time, this uh, scope was actually sighted in almost like perfectly. Um, I had to go up about an inch at 50 yards, so that was pretty much it. So I think they actually lapped the receivers. Um, so scope and mount, right? I have the American Defense. I forgot what it's called. It's an American Defense 30 millimeter um, AR mount. I have the Vortex Strike Eagle on it. It's a 1 to 6 power scope. Um, for under $300, it's actually, you know, pretty decent. The glass on it isn't as good as you would get on a little bit more expensive one, obviously, but, you know, it is what it is. I think for $500, though, you can get a, like, probably a much better quality scope. So. Yeah, it's got these uh, quick detach levers on it, so that's really nice. Um, rear sight on it. If I ever, if I ever have to, uh, you know, if my scope breaks or something, I could just, you know, release the lever and flip up these irons, and the gun's back up and running. Um, so the ammunition that I'm running on it is from Hornady. It's the Hornady Frontier ammunition. It is the 75 grain boat tail hollow point. Let's see if you can see if the camera will focus on that. Probably not. Definitely not. It doesn't matter though. So it's a hollow point boat tail, 75 grain. It's coming out of this 16 and a quarter inch barrel at a little over 2,700 feet per second. I think that's about 1,300 foot pounds. So yeah, the barrel's a 1 in 7 twist, and these uh, 75 grain projectiles really like that twist rate. So not that, they, not that they won't work well with like a 1 in 9 twist or a 1 in 12 twist. Who runs those 1 in 12s anyways? But yeah, those are rare, but um, I think it'll, these am, this ammo will definitely work fine with a 1 in 9 twist. But I think it definitely prefers the faster, you know, at least 1 in 8 twist, 1 in 7 preferably. Uh, twist rates. So I run a nickel boron bolt carrier group in it. 
um, just because I think it looks nice and it's very easy to clean. The carbon just wipes off of it. Um, yeah, it has a nickel boron hammer and trigger on it as well. So, um, and I do have a, another strip lower coming from Aero Precision. Um, I'm going to be running the Rock River Arms three and a half pound varmint trigger on that. Um, this nickel boron trigger is actually not that bad. Um, I think I think it's about five pounds and it breaks really clean. But if I'm going to run a heavy barrel and a scope on it, I need like a match trigger on it, which the Rock River Arms triggers. You know, that's a match trigger. Those are really nice. Um, almost as good as a Geisley. I think it's better value for the money than a Geisley though. But still not as good, but better better value. Magpul MOE grip in flat dark earth. I have a little mix match of flat dark earth and black on here. I think it looks super nice. Yeah, nothing special with this grip. Um, yeah, they work just fine. And Magpul STR stock. So I like the STR stock because on a heavy barrel AR like this, I like to balance out the gun by adding weight to the rear a little bit. Um, I also have four CR123A batteries in there. So that adds a little bit of weight. And if I ever need batteries, they are there. And I'm running the Magpul um, Pro Sling as well. These are actually padded. And they're really nice. On my other AR over there, I'm running the MS4 Gen 2 Sling. It's not padded or anything, but just for like a duty use carbine, home defense carbine, those are fine. Yeah guys, I think that I covered everything. Um, if you like the video, hit the subscribe button, like, comment, and share, and uh, let me know what you think. Thanks.